Okay, and welcome back on those delightful, happy, upbeat theme notes. Welcome to America's favorite quiz show. It's really a game show. It's a musical game show. It's called Name This or That Tune. We'll get to that a little later, but first we want to say hello to a, one of our favorite contestants, a man who wins more return bus tickets than he does two bus tickets, but that's another story. James Franklin Ma- James Pardon me. Got, no. For, never mind. Maybe we'll have a contest on that. <laughs> what are you doing? And, and it's not free base. No, it's not crack either. Nope. Did you hear him make his joke about crack cocaine and the pie crust? Who? 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 The foo in the White House. Oh. What did he say? Well, see, now I have to play it. Right. He said he and his he and his wife were at a uh, a lay. Who was it? It was a gay and lesbian, transsexual, quadrisexual, multisexual, interdimensional sexual <laughs> dinner of some kind, and he was saying goodbye to the White House pastry chef, Bob, and his wife, Charlie. And he, he made a joke about why their pie crust was so good. And for those of you who may have missed it, let me see if I can find it here. Here it is. All right, we'll have to queue it up. Anyway, the uh, the queue in the White House said it. How was that? That wasn't bad. It's on Washington Post News. News video. All right, now here he is at this this dinner. And Michael, I mean, <clears throat> Michelle, did you see Joan Rivers at least? I see nothing. I've got my head buried in a, in a right. new book I'm working on. Oh, well, well What's jo- Joan Rivers got to do with it? Joan is a wonderful, smart gal, very quick, very clever, and she said we've got a homosexual president and a tranny first lady, transgender, and she's she right. Been, she must have been doing her homework. You got it. All right, here's the uh, here's a little spiel saying... Uh, is that, do, you think, do you think this is why all of a sudden, after all this time, all these years, all these centuries, that now the big thing is uh, whatever it is homosexual transsexual <laughs> multisexual you know this push in the military you know it's hey it's not only okay we want you well what we're doing if you think about it is it's really looping all the way back to the Greeks the Greek soldiers now there weren't women fighting then but the Greek male soldiers all had their young boy sex toys with them who would, they would take care of their instruments and so forth, and uh, they were called catamites, and they would have their little catamite, and it, homosexuality was the uh, preferred way of uh, doing business back then. So we've kind of made it full circle in a way. We're getting there, F O O L circle. Here's uh, the alleged president. mentioned a man who's made uh, life of the White House very sweet. This is one of Michelle and my favorite people, our executive pastry chef, Bill uh, Yoshis, who's here tonight with his husband, Charlie. Where's Bill? Bill Yoshis and his husband, Charlie. Okay? I just want to make sure you got that. So, but he's leaving. He's li- this, is the, this is the problem. We, we, we call Bill the crust master because uh, his pies... I don't know what he does, whether he puts crack in them or, uh, but there is no crack in our pie. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that when, when we first came to the White House, I don't know if you, some of you remember this, the first year, like my cholesterol shot up. And and the doctor was like, "What happened? You had like this really low cholesterol. You're I don't really think healthy. that's the only thing shooting up." And I thought, it's "You the got pie. it." It's the pie. So we had to we had to establish like a really firm rule about no pie during the week. Okay, enough of that. 
Anyway, uh, you know, is this uh, Dr. Freud calling Dr. Freud? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> the no. Freudian flip, I think. No. Don't know. Or maybe so, that's what Michelle wears. I don't know. We don't. It, look, we in all yeah, what, what a bunch of what, what a laughing stock they've made out of the whole thing. This whole country we're turning into a third world country, you know. And, uh, as soon as the dollar collapses and, and quits being the, uh, the unit of exchange around the world, uh, you know, p- people all around the world are going. We're, we're going to become the butt of every joke there is. And I suppose we deserve it. I mean, I we're only we already this, we're, we're only bringing this on ourselves. We actually already are. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's really obscene how bad it is. Out I there. mean, you know. Uh, ever since World War II, we hadn't even been able to win a war. We can't even win the peace. <laughs> no, uh, the military-industrial complex wins every time, though. Oh yeah. Well, and the idea is just keep that rolling. You know, keep that going. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we should just invest in defense industry. Where's uh, you know? I, I really hated Eisenhower. I don't like the man. Uh, but he did one good, two good things. Operation went back when he said, this country has a border. It's nothing against these particular people, but we are going to expel them because they're not supposed to be here. And he he expelled them, sent them back to Mexico and Central America. Lots of them. Try that now. Look what they did to Proposition 187 in California. They not only disemboweled it, they they literally turned it inside out and upside down. Mm-hmm. The courts. The mm-hmm. courts. Yeah. So these people who talk about, we're going after Washington, we're going to take them to court, nah. are idiots. Yeah. They, idiots. They, they've missed the bus. Gone. No, that ain't going to work. Uh, they, hey, they, this is the only, the only place where a lot of people, I think, part ways with you and I, is that I think everybody sees what's going on, and everybody understands that they're dragging this country down, and they're trying to level us out with third world countries, and blah blah blah. And I exactly. think people kind of get that. Yeah. What they still don't get is is that folks, this isn't just something that just happened. Okay, it's not like we just degenerated. Yes, it did. It just situation. happened in the last year. It was just a flu. No, no, no. No, it's a plan they've been working on since at least World Meet War One, probably even before that. They've okay. been working on this for since the Civil War. Exactly. The Civil War. Exactly. Uh, if you if you'd read my book uh, Robot Secrecy, you'll know that uh, uh, the German Chancellor von Bismarck, who put the Second Reich there together, uh, uh, he uh, he said that uh, what we call the Civil War, and there wasn't anything civil about it. it I mean, it was not even by definition a civil war, because a civil war means a war between factions within one country. This right. was a whole part of the country Absolutely. that said, we're, we're cutting loose, okay? Yep. We, the South was the Ukraine, okay? And they said, we're, just, we're, we're different, and we're, we're unengaging here. And, uh, and the North said, no, you're not. And so they got in a big fight, okay? So it was actually one country against another. It was not the factions within some country. And, uh, but anyway, and he said that that was all stirred up by the Rothschilds. And that the Rothschilds, who, since they dominated the banks in France, England, Austria, Germany, <coughs> that this was a plan to get the North and South in North America fight with each other, bleed each other dry, and that the British that were in Canada were prepared to move down South, and the French army was under Maximilian in Mexico, and sure. they were prepared to move North. Mm-hmm. And this was, see, this goes all the way back to the War of 1812. It mm-hmm. goes all the way back mm-hmm. to the American Revolution. Certainly the does. European bankers wanted to gain control over North America. Their biggest wet dream. Yeah. And they tried that and tried that. They tried it, and they lost the revolution. So they came back in 1812, burned Washington. Okay, I can't burn the White House. Isn't that amazing? They actually burned Washington. I know, I know. You, 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 ask, you ask a thousand people on the street, they, nobody would know that. No, they don't know that. They don't understand their history. They don't know where we came from, so they don't know where we're going. And then when that didn't work, 
because of uh, the tenacity of the North Americans and the fact that they were separated by the Atlantic Ocean, and it took a whole lot of time and effort to get over here, uh, you know, that didn't work, quite work out for them. So they began slowly working about how we're going to destroy this country. And by World War I, they got us involved, and then they began to create their secret societies. And they began to infiltrate American society. And they began to learn the modern techniques of propaganda, mind control, uh, you know, advertising, public relations. And they have crafted us into this chaotic mess so that, what's the end result? So somebody will step up and say, oh, well, give me the power and I'll take care of it. And, and Mr. Obama's kind of trying to fill those shoes, isn't he? he he's uh, trying to slip those dainty feet in there. Yep. Yeah, he sure is. Uh, we got, we got. I got some real bizarre selections for the contest tonight. So we'll get there in a couple. You're of trying. Days. You're trying to trip me up. I, I can't wait. I can't. I'm just. I'm looking forward to this. And the rest of you out there too. I sharpen your mental pencils. It's gonna be but, a tough but one. This, this isn't hardly fair because I don't have the technical ability here to put on a few music selections. I could. Pull up and, yes, you and can. Be, you can play it right. I would befuddle you. Play it. Do what to me? I would befuddle you. You, all right. Which that is too. better than Elmer fuddling you. I, I hope so. You <laughs> could play it right into the telephone, and we'd be able to hear it. Yeah, but I don't have anything to play it on. Have you ever heard of a CD player? Well, no. I've got uh, a pornograph. A pornograph? <laughs> What the hell's a pornograph? <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to hear you about your private life, Jim. <laughs> Keep your pornograph to yourself. No, no, I have a record player, but it's a one of those big multi-piece things. You know, I can't bring it here. Maybe I could go there. Maybe it's got those old tubes with little fires inside of them. I understand. Yeah, actually, and I remember one night mm-hmm. I tried to send you a picture of my dome top radio, my old Zenith, and. I can't even seem to figure out how to get that to you. Now here, okay, here's a story. There is a radio, and I, doggone it, who makes it? I'll have to look this up. It was named in honor of May West. Not initially, but it was so much like May West that they called it the May West. And um, if you look up May West, let me see, <laughs> May West. I thought they... Finally got around to calling that stereo speakers. No. No. Just, uh, that's cute. Images for May West Radio. Just type it in and look, and then you'll see the pictures are right there. Uh, the May West Radio was designed by Count Alexis D. Saknovsky. Sak- <laughs> Sak- well, All right. I, I see why they named it after May West. The fabled May West tabletop shortwave radio has been crafted by Count Alexis D. Sefnovsky and was made by Emerson. I knew that. Uh, as model BD-197. Should have had two Ds there. In 1938, a few months after he was appointed as designer, there are still unsolved mysteries in Alexis' life, especially when it comes to his divorce from Countess Ethleen. Sounds pretty damn suspicious to me. Who was, as they say here on Wikipedia, buxom and voluptuous. Uh, da, 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 da. Anyway, this is called a May West Radio. And if you just look it up, you'll see why. They're, they're hard to find. They're, they they bring about four or $5,000 for one. I'll send you a picture. Well, of well, go on down there and look at the time that she got in trouble on the radio <laughs> this was May West with a dialogue with Charlie McCarthy oh hysterical yeah I, I'm going to try and pull that up later 